Hey, hello and good morning from Walla Walla, Washington. This is Dee Dee, and I have a fun video for me. I hope you enjoy it too. I've been wanting to make. It's about the Monarch 10 double E top uh, slide or compound rest. And I, I remember uh, a time or two people complaining about uh, there's no means to oil it. And uh, I happen to have a way that fully oils the compound rest, and that's this Axelson here. It oils the entire thing, uh, except the screw you oil up here. But it pushes it up through a groove, a circular groove. And so oil, it, <laughs> oil, there's oil pressure here, and it pumps this up to a point that it has to have a lock. Well, at least I run high oil pressure. I crank, <laughs> I crank this uh, apron oiler up so it gets oil everywhere. And then I crank it down when I think there's too much. But see, the, it oils that, and it's like uh, there's oil leaking out of that that I loosen the knots here. So it has to be locked because it's up floating on oil, and it, the tool can suck it in. It, it's like uh, something I have not experienced on other lathes. It's like the whole thing's on ball bearings. Very, very slick. I have it locked now. But over here on the Monarch 10 E, there's no provision to oil it. Let's get over here and look. Come on, lock that down. Hurry up here. And I'm going to show you how to service that top slide. Okay. Let's do it real quick. So the first thing you do, we want to oil the ways and the screw, okay? And we're not going to do anything with this part. Uh, that's like a separate deal. And this is an inch metric one, and it's a lot more complicated than the standard. I suggest uh, when you're dealing with these is to make a tool like this. This one fits here. This one fits here. Then I have another one that fits uh, the other places. So that's a good thing to do. So the first thing you do is you roll this all the way back. Just like that, it's almost all the way back. Then you take and uh, loosen the uh, cap screws. There is two of them. Get them out of there. One on the other side. Now this really made a uh, made one guy particularly mad. He goes, even the cheap uh, Chinese ladies have a couple ball oilers on the top, and I get, I have no explanation for this. It's just it's the way it is, and I've learned to deal with it. See, you bring it all the way back, and then you don't have so far to unscrew the screw. See. There we go. So to service it, all you got to do, there's thrust bearing right here. Oil it. I got Vactor number two oil. You oil that and put oil on the screw, plenty of oil. Now you have to do this quite often, you know. Let me get this over here. Don't drop anything. Because... Okay, now you can push this forward, but don't push it all the way off, because then you have to stab the gib in, and just wipe this down, bring it back, the nut will stop it. To remove that nut, you have to get underneath and uh, use one of those uh, pin wrenches. Okay, so I got it wiped off in the front. I'll put a bunch of whey oil here on the front. Lots of oil. Push it forward again, but not all the way off. You see, you don't want to get it off that gib because then you're going to be dinking with it. About that far is good enough. Wipe that off. Oil it. Bring it back. Move it back and forth. You can feel how nice it is. It's just, you know, this is precision made. Very, very nice. Now you have to do this because the thing sits and oil gets sticky. So if you want to do the good threads, you want this working right. Okay, so now we push it, uh, 
pretty much forward and then uh, you can kind of see the screw and I don't know if it's left hand right hand, I can't remember I think it's just this way there we go then you get it started right hold it pull it on back just makes it a lot easier then you can get it back up to position get those cap screws back in Just like that. Now what I do is I don't get them too tight just yet. Okay, then move it all the way forward. There's no uh, dowel pins here. And it probably doesn't really need them. You just want to screw it all the way forward, then that helps center the screw. Then snug this. Get some of that oil on the machine. <laughs> oh, now that's nice. Smooth as silk. We don't need no ball oilers. This is much better. And it took uh, five minutes. It took five minutes to do that. Okay, since we saved so much time, I'm going to show you a couple other little tricks. Now, since we don't have tremendous oil pressure, <laughs> like the axles are, uh, keeping debris out, and nothing's going to get between uh, the top slide and the cross slide base here on that axle, because it's got oil pressure and oil leaks out. So here, I have taken a quad ring, which is a type of O-ring, but it's square. And I put it here, see, and it keeps the crap out, just like that. So when you want to set something, you just lift it up, see, then you push it back down. And it keeps that real nice. Now, the, <laughs> the cross slide doesn't uh, automatically oil on this, the cross slide screw. There's really no way to do it. So I've shown this before, but it's good to show again. This is uh, the t for the taper attachment locks uh, the, uh, the cross feed screw up when you're using the taper attachment. It's got this uh, 5 16 bolt in it, and I drilled a hole in the head and uh, sunk a little ball mill down there, and I can oil the screw. I just run it back and forth, and uh, oil that screw, see? Ah, nice oil. That's how you make these things last. Now, over here on the axle, son, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they, they didn't make very many of these early ones and they did a lot of changes. I went and did the same thing. I, I wasn't sure how much oil that the, or if the, for sure it was getting oil to uh, the cross feed screw. So I just made the same kind of thing there with a brass cap and into this tin cover. You know, I, uh, I learned from a guy named Bill that it, it's kind of good to oil things. I think it is. There's still got a little time left there. That's doing pretty good. But uh, I thought you might find that interesting about the oiling on these lathes. I, uh, I haven't come across uh, uh, a lathe like this axis in that actually 
has oil pressure <laughs> to the way, to the waist of the compound rust. It, it's really quite a deal. But I tell you, you see, can I lock uh, the little screw here? Oh, see how easy that moves? Unlock that. And this thing just moves like a dream. It just floats. Floats on oil. Yeah. Lots of, uh, lots of oil I don't think hurts anything, you know, and, uh, but I thought I'd show you that on, uh, on, on your Monarch 10 E, and it's really, it, it took, look, five minutes, and uh, if you're going to cut some screw threads or something, uh, your compound rest is going to be sticky if you haven't done it in a month or two, year or two, <laughs> whatever. This one here, I don't cut screw threads on, though they did have some attachments for that. But um, I think the most common thing was to use these uh, watchmaker screw plates. I have some of those things around. I don't know what that is. Something. Oh, the buzzer's off. Okay, I gotta go, and uh, I'll be back soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.